Yeah, you though, know, yeah, you though. Know, on this episode right here, we're going to watch a, a video about a Denver rapper named FBP Mo. And FBP stands for Few But Plenty. And they, they some young getters, man. They out the city and they was doing their thing. But things done went bad. We're going to let the story unfold as it's narrated. And you know how we do. We're going to watch this video together. We're going to pause it. We're going to talk about it in the comments. And we're going to get it. Let's go. Man, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of EOS. It's 1090 Jake, and I'm rocking with y'all. Y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on Denver rapper FBP Mo, who's been charged with 14 counts of attempted murder and was one of 10 gang members indicted in Operation Ricochet. April 18th, 2022, the Denver District Attorney announced Operation Ricochet a two-year-long investigation into a criminal street gang known as Few But Plenty. FBP was formed by members of various gangs within Denver, Colorado's metro area. Some of these gangs include GKI, short for the Gangster Killer Incas, a West Denver gang now going by the name Gallant Knights Insane. The East Side Oldies 13 is a Denver-based subset of the Serenos, a California-based prison gang predominantly made up of those with Mexican heritage. The Crenshaw Mafia Bloods hit Denver in the early 90s, originating as an all-black gang but over the years began accepting many Mexican and Asian members. According to the investigation, it appears Hispanic members of all three gangs formed FBP to promote music while taking on light blue bandanas and hand signs representing Westside. Operation Ricochet would be the first takedown targeting FBP and the violence behind the music. Moses Fernandez. So we're gonna pause right there just to you know, give a little insight. You know, Denver is still one of them places that if you rapping, you know, you gotta really be who you rapping about. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the, the scene is getting bigger and bigger by the day, but you know, ultimately the rappers out of Denver, you know, if, if you really somebody, they gonna know what you, they gonna know your, your business, your car, you know, there ain't none of that. And all the hoods that he named, you know what I mean, are prevalent in Denver across the board. And they've been prevalent, like you said, since the 90s, but we're going in 2023. And it's crazy because this young cat right here, you know, he was set to blow. He was already, he was already out. I mean, shit, the city was already showing love. And it's rare when the city be showing you love because Denver's one of those cities where, you know, if, if you're from the city, you know, everybody hate against each other. You know, they show fake love, unfortunately. And, you know, he was really about to pop. But once again, you know, rap in the streets, you know, being who you say you are, you know, that gangster shit, they ain't flying in Colorado. You know, it's a conservative state. And they, they want to lock you up when you're on that gangster shit. And there's too many people that be telling. Penalties are very, very strict. It's a shame to watch a young cat like this be able to, you know, get his buzz, get his motion, and then have it just stolen from him, you know what I mean? And it's not even so much that it was stolen from him, but he stole it from himself because, you know, you can't play both sides of the fence, right? You know, you can't, you can't, you know, it's like, uh, but there should have been a middle ground somewhere, especially when your shit really started taking motion, but I don't know bro's whole circumstances. I don't know, like, what he got going on in his day-to-day -day struggle, but, you know, damn, a whole lot of potentials just thrown out the window. Junior, identified by investigators as FBP Mo, would be the face of the movement and FBP's biggest rising rapper. Raised by a single mother in Denver's West Side, Mo would detail in interviews the origin of few but plenty as a family motto passed on by his uncles. In June of 2019, tragedy struck as one of Mo's cousins, whom he considered a brother, was shot and killed. June 2nd, 2019, Lakewood police received multiple calls just after 4 a.m. reporting shots fired. Arriving on scene, police located a house party with two gunshot victims, later learning another two victims had arrived at a nearby emergency room. Among the four injured was 17-year-old Daniel Avila, suffering a hole in his chest as doctors began emergency surgery in an attempt to keep him alive. But doctors would fail, and Daniel would die on the operating table. The following month, FBP Mo would release his biggest song to date titled No Pressure, in which he memorialized his cousin. The music video currently stands at over 1.5 million views. Continuing with the music, 
Another one of Mo's cousins would find inspiration in Mo's success, starting a rap and going by the name FBP Spaz Out. The two could be seen together in an interview with the Somewhere in the City podcast on YouTube, where Spaz Out states he had just started rapping in December of 2019. But before the interview was posted to YouTube, tragedy would strike again. January 22nd, 2020, a teenager was dropped off and left at an urgent care facility in South Denver. Soon after, he was found to be suffering a gunshot wound, declared dead, and identified as 17-year-old Jeremiah Baca, also known as FBP Spazzo. A police investigation determined he'd been shot during an attempted robbery roughly 15 minutes before being dropped off. Less than two months later, police would arrest two men and one juvenile, charging them all with murder. According to Operation Ricochet, the investigation officially started January 23rd, 2020, the day after Spazzo was killed. Within two years, 10 men- So they started the whole investigation into him right after the day his homeboy got killed, but his homeboy only 17, that's a kid. Bro was still, uh, man, has so much more life ahead of him. And two men and one juvenile was the one arrested in connection to his murder. So two grown men in a, in a juvenile killed a 17 year old kid. And if they get, you know, pieces of the puzzle lined up, they finna do a life sentence. So he really lost three people. Three people lost, actually four people, because there's three over there and one there. That's four people that lost their life behind what? Behind behind what though? I mean, yeah, I know it's, it's, it's gang issues, but I mean, what for real though, like your life was thrown away for that though. All of y'all. Man. Members of Few But Plenty would stand accused of 14 shootings, targeting rival gang members and anyone associated with them. The 114 felony count indictment would detail FBP turning 47 people into victims through a series of violent acts, majority of which were drive-by shootings, targeting rival homes. Motivated by the demons that come with the lifestyle and the losses of those you love, as shots were fired, videos were uploaded to YouTube with song lyrics dissing rival gangs and detailing acts of violence. FBP was able to profit $12,800 solely off of music videos posted to YouTube during the time of the investigation. Exactly one year after Spaz Out was killed, Another shooting would hit home for FBP when shots were fired out of an SUV taking the life of 45-year-old Paul Baca, Spazout's father. Both father and son dead by gunfire on January 22nd, exactly one year apart. At this time... The fuck? Damn, that, that's more than a coincidence right there, though. Damn, your son died the year before, then you die? Damn, like... That's crazy as shit right there. And it's crazy too, because he said he only made $12,000 off of their music. You know what I mean? That really ain't much after out of that time span right there. And it's crazy because they got motion. You know, that no pressure, that, that thing be going. I, I'll leave a link in the uh, comments of where that video at. But yeah, man, that's crazy. Mo was the only one out of 10 not in custody and is currently on the run. Police believe he has ties to Las Vegas and is suspected of being anywhere from Nevada to California with a $5,000 reward being offered for information leading to his arrest. Mo stands accused of violating Colorado's Organized Crime Control Act, which is the state equivalent of a federal RICO. He also stands accused of conspiring to commit murder, 14 attempted murders, and various other charges. In one of the shootings, Mo was accused of committing a drive-by with another FBP member, striking the house 21 times with 45 and 9mm bullets. Other members included in the takedown can be seen with Mo during interviews and in music videos themselves with damn near every one of them being accused of terrorizing Denver. It's safe to say all 10 members are facing up to a life sentence in Colorado State Prison, and time will tell whether FBP Mo will be caught a disappear into a life on the run. Oh, guy, bad right there. Hopefully his ass got out to Mexico or somewhere. And it was a long way away from the bullshit, but you got to deal with that shit at some point. I mean, there's no way, you know, that this this is, you got to live life on the run or you got to surrender at some point. When you surrender, you got to go lay it down. And, you know, man was having motion. Like his whole career right now is just on pause, right? Like, 
you know, and I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, out of all these people around him, even in the video they saw him, he got big homies and said, how, how ain't none of your big homies? How ain't, how come ain't none of the, the older, older cats around you? How come they couldn't get you on, on the right type of time where you wasn't involved in any of this shit right here? When you start getting motion like that, you're supposed to be able to dial it in, but you know, this is playing with fire because there ain't no winners in the street. You know, you, the only winners are the most you're gonna win is you're gonna go fed. He, and he got a Rico, so he 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 hit the lottery of the state because they hit him with the biggest charge possible. They all they trying to give him all life sentences for that shit right there. And I get it, the anger and the pain, and I get it. I totally get it, man. I've been I've been <laughs> through the Denver streets before these cats was even around, and I'm telling you, like, there's never no winners. Nobody ever comes out on top out there. Nobody does but the system. The system is the only winner. The system, the police, all them. They're the ultimate winners. When they say crime pays, yeah, crime pays for them. It pays for them because it funds uh, a job for them. It funds their family. It funds, uh, you know, the, the penitentiary industrial complex. You know, that that's who crime pays. When crime if crime pays anybody, that's who it pays. And we ain't trying to put no money in their pocket. You feel me? But you know, this is a sad story right here. Bro had a whole career going, had that motion. And then, man, here it go. Everybody dropping. Now, something I want to highlight in this video is generational gangbanging. I know some of y'all are going to be like, damn, the kid got killed and then the father got killed on the kid's anniversary for his death. It's generational gangbanging. The father can be seen in a picture, the old school Chicano fit with the light blue bandana that says West Side. This is something that they inherited. This is a lifestyle that they inherited. This is something that they picked up from the people that they looked up to growing up. And for that reason, that's some real shit. Especially coming from Denver, I can say like, looking back at the generations, you know, to where it's at now, like Denver now has more potential to win and for more people to have the winner mind state than previously, because previously those generations right there, all those, all those people from those generations, mine included, are losers for the most part. You ain't see a lot of them successful. You ain't see a lot of them go on to do bigger and brighter things. And you know, you don't, you didn't, you don't really see no motion with them like that. Majority of them were dead or they locked up, and that's why there's so many young cats out here like this without the right guidance and not moving correctly. Because you know, once again, there ain't, there ain't no real, real like thoroughbred OGs out there that can really school these cats and have them to move in the right way, but. Ultimately, yeah, they inherited this shit. This has been generation after generation after generation. In 2023, like, you think these cats would wake up to it, but they've been getting spoon-fed this stuff since they was a kid, and they think it's the move because that's what they've seen their parents do, their older brothers do, and, you know, everybody goes to the same place. We all go to jail, prison, uh, ER, you know, that's the type of shit that happens, you know, when you out here moving on the streets like this, you know what I mean? There ain't no winners in this shit, but, you know, 2023, we got to move smarter, Gotta think better, you know what I mean? We gotta have more value of our lives, though. You feel me? Generational gangbanging has caused generational losses. So as sad as it is to lose multiple family members and to see the son repeat the footsteps of the father, this is exactly what the fuck comes with it, you know? And that's why people respect certain gangsters because it's like y'all really living that life y'all really doing it y'all really making music about shit that's really happening but it's a double-edged sword while you get the res yeah it's a double-edged sword but either way you cut it you're gonna lose there ain't no win on one side nah you know ultimately because you a real rapper but this is this this that reality isn't everybody's reality don't gotta always be reality like you know rappers don't live like, you know, like the real street rappers, like that's what you want to inspire to be is a real street rapper. Like you might as well throw your life away because that's all that really is. Like aspire for something bigger, better and greater because there's so much more life to them than this shit right here. There's more than life than this little ass little pocket of, of an area that you keep yourself confined in. It's a bigger world with more people and, 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 and brighter outlooks than that small circle that you keep around. If you keep a circle around you of cats that let you go down the drain, them cats has never been your friends, you know what I mean? They, you know, it's the blind leading the blind into a ditch, you know? We gotta do better, you know what I mean? We gotta do better. 2023, man, y'all, come on. Come on, man, we gotta do better. While you get the respect from other gangsters of doing something real, you really suffer the consequences. 
And now Mo's on the run, facing forever. And whether he's been caught or not at the time of this video, I'm assuming he hasn't. And best bet, he's gonna have to get the fuck out of the US if he hasn't already. He's gonna have to get lost in South America and go wherever he can go. Now, one thing that I did notice is none of FBP has been charged with an actual murder. Everything has been attempted murders and mostly shooting up people's houses, which I don't really respect because you don't know who's inside of that household unless they're willing to just kill anything that's inside of there. Me personally, I feel like you should go after specifically who you want to go after and leave everyone else out of it. But that's just me. You know what I'm saying? And who am I? I'm just a YouTuber. But just because they haven't been charged with any murders doesn't mean they weren't committing murders. It doesn't mean that they didn't actually catch a few motherfuckers, but the only crimes they were caught for was the shit that they attempted to do. And to be honest with you, it sounds like after Daniel was killed and then Spaz Out was killed, them boys were just on a rampage trying to hit up whoever the fuck they could hit up. It's revenge. That's what it sounds like. It's all alleged. That's an alleged motive. But if that, in fact, was the motive, and that's the lifestyle y'all live, I can do nothing but respect that because you're doing what you're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, for y'all, the viewers, it doesn't mean that's what y'all should do or should want to do. Y'all can look at the, oh, he's living like that. He's bought it. He got 1.5 million views. So fucking what? They only made just under $13,000 in two years. You can make more money than they were making working at McDonald's. Their music wasn't making money like that. It was just getting them clout. And clout is worthless, especially once you go to prison. Everything's over with. Everything ends. So understand that before you glorify the lifestyle. The lifestyle comes with nothing but destruction and pain. And you have to see both sides of that double-edged sword before you even consider getting into it or spending the rest of your life living that type of lifestyle. But hey, it's 1090 Jake. I'm rocking with y'all or y'all rocking with me. Till next time. Yeah, that's some real shit though. Finished it off. That was a proper way to finish it off because it leads you to your destruction, hands down, point blank, period. And you know, ultimately, what's being real though, you being, you want clout. They, they, he said you can make more in McDonald's and they did in two years off 1.5 million and they got all the clout, they got their name out there. But ultimately, I mean, that respect and that clout, I mean, you go to prison with that, who the fuck cares? Like, what the fuck does that matter? You around a bunch of men anyway. Now what, you the alpha male? I mean, yeah, what the fuck is, what a waste of life. You know what I mean? Especially when the cats got so much potential, so many gifts and blessings inside themselves. So young cats, pay heed to this. You see these cats take these downfalls right here, playing with fire when you, when you do this type of shit right here. And I'm sure them cats was really hurting inside their homeboys got killed they wasn't giving a fuck they shooting up all kind of shit but but colorado they gonna stack all them charges on you don't let you be on probation aggravated they gonna try to they gonna try to throw your life away because you gave them the option to throw your life away by making those decisions and those decisions right there can be the most costly thing that you can ever do because before you know it you're doing life in prison behind that decision you feel me so it's a shame don't see cats come from the city and be be that turnt right there then just let it fall because Denver need that breakthrough. Denver need that acknowledgement. The Denver rap game has came a long way and there's some there's some hitters on the scene right now. So, you know, crazy to watch a story like that. But in 2023, what we gonna do, we gonna do better.